Dr. Marianne. And I'm Dr. Adam. And we are Counselors, Counselors in Quarantine. Quarantine. And we are sponsored by our boss, Dr. Lacey Carpillo, Vice President for Student Affairs. As psychologists in the Counseling Center here at EOU, we thought it would be fun to share with you some nuggets of wisdom that we share with the students we work with. And yeah, we've been told by our sponsor that unfortunately our ratings are low and we needed to do something <laughs> to boost our ratings. And so we have a special guest with us today, Jeremy Yay! David Jones, Director of Residence Life. Yeah! Yay! Woo! Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Well, good. I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, as uh, Adam mentioned, I'm the Director of Residence Life and Housing Operations. It's been a crazy season for us in the res halls. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we have a handful of students mm -hmm. that stayed back. We have about 70 students still in the res hall, Yay. and we've been in quarantine together. Yeah, I appreciate Yay. the applause. It's been quite the time. <laughs> Go surviving. EOU. Yeah, you and you. Uh, many of those students uh, needed a place to be, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's an honor to be able to fill that, that need and to be able to make that happen. Uh, but certainly in this season, we've been facing challenges just like everybody else. And so I'm actually really glad to be with you today because I've got some questions that our students have been putting out there. Mm -hmm. And cool. uh, I'm really excited to kind of get your feedback on that and what that looks like. Uh, because we've been getting questions not only from our students on campus, but our students that have gone home and are wow. navigating the home environment right now. Yeah. And a lot's changed for them. I mean, if... If you come to fall, mm -hmm. you, you get out on your own, you, you start to experience freedom, making decisions, and facing the consequences for those decisions. Right. But for the most part, mo many of our students have made that step in their development into an independent state. And to go home, a lot of our, our, our students' parents are saying, hey, um, I'm not ready for you to make that jump. And they're treating them as if they're still in high school or perhaps even younger. Right. And so these students are reaching out saying, hey Jeremy, uh, what do we do with this? How do, I, how do I navigate this environment where my mom or my dad is treating me like I'm 15 and I'm not 15 anymore. I've made that change. I'm an independent adult and I've been making a lot of my own decisions and I've been handling a lot of my own business. But coming back into the family, I just don't know how to navigate this. And it's really, really hard for me. And so we're hearing students that, with this experience. Mm -hmm. And then we have 70 students that in, oh gosh, one month mm -hmm. are going to be going home and having that same experience as well. Uh, and so what advice do you have for these students? And how, how can we uh, give them nuggets, as you were calling them, of information <laughs> yeah. that will help them make that step forward in this, this process? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so it is. Um, and you know, Adam and I follow a developmental model when we do counseling with students, and so your question really fits into that developmental model. Um, because ultimately, our goal is, in my mind, to always raise kids to become adults. Right. So, so psychologically functioning adults, you know, emotionally functioning adults, financially functioning adults, you know, just, right. and, and, and being able to, to do intimacy, have good relationships, take responsibility for self, you know, ownership for self. So your question, yeah, it's like at, the, and at this university, and I know in your program, in the Res Life program, your goal is to move students into this place of adulthood as well. Yes. And so, so yeah, all year long, we all at the university have been encouraging students to move in that direction. And some have resisted, some have jumped, you know, into that because <laughs> they wanted it, they were yeah. ready for it. But yeah, that, that presents challenges then when their family hasn't been a part of their growth and their movement. And in fact, the family might have different ideas about, yeah, like what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's interesting too because when students, I don't know, they're like what you're saying, they're, they're coming into the home, they're being treated like they're younger. Actually what it is that moves students into adulthood, oftentimes parents feel like, oh, I have to parent them. How do I parent my adult student right. or my adult child? Mm -hmm. And in reality, it's not about parenting them because once they're 18, they're in that place of adulthood, they're actually mm -hmm. adults and what helps them grow is to come from that place of mutuality. So that place of, of evenness and how that looks in practice actually is, is a lot of the tools that you know students out there that they learn in res life is probably going to be similar to what's going to help them at home. 
So an example being if you have two people who are struggling and, and they're in conflict, what's one of the first things you do? Well, we ask them to reach out to them and have a, a conversation where they can communicate mm -hmm. what that experience is for them mm -hmm. and then check in with the other student or the other party right. on like what the their roommate. experience is. Yeah, what the roommate, uh -huh. what that experience is yeah. for them. And if it escalates even to a formal process, there, there's something there too, right? Oh, yeah, where we would do a conflict mediation. Or roommate a, agreement. Yeah, roommate yeah. agreements. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so for our students, mm -hmm. that's, it's sort of the same process. You know, you're coming mm -hmm. back into a space where you're living with somebody mm -hmm. and you come from that place of mutuality. Right. You know, you lay out, these are the expectations, this is what I'm looking for, right. what, are, what are your expectations right. for me moving in here, mm -hmm. and come from that adult place. Right, Right, because a lot of times, yeah, if they're still being parented by their parents, yeah. then the tendency is to act like an adolescent and like just want to rebel and fight back. Like, you can't <laughs> yeah. tell me what to do, and I've been on my own for nine months. Sure. And, you know, and so as soon as as soon as a student acts as an adolescent to their parents, and their parents are probably going to try to still parent them, right? Right. It validates that experience it, for them. It does. Mm -hmm. And so, so students, I mean, in a lot of ways have a lot of power because you can come in and be that adult that you want to be treated as. Right. And just say, okay, I know, and I guess one thing I encourage people to do, to do too is feed the power of your parents. Because if you're moving in your parents' house, it's their house, yeah. right? Like they get to call the shot, yeah. right? Sure. They do still have power over you, especially if they pay your cell phone bill or right. they, you know, yeah. pay for anything. And right. so, so align with that power rather than fight it. Because yeah. adolescents fight the power. Yeah. And adults you, you get that in res life, probably <laughs> yeah, right. Right. fighting the power. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it, and it is really powerful when students start to align with that power and say, "Hey, this is this is the agreement of the community. These yes. are the community standards, and yeah. I want to either figure out how to align with them or make adjustments if this is unreasonable or unacceptable to me. I will find a new community to right. live in or find a community that aligns with my values." Exactly. Right. And and that's it's interesting you say that too because for a lot of students who are in res life like going home is a choice right right mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't think like that well, i have to go home right but we always have choices i mean sometimes the choice is to be homeless versus <laughs> living with my family right. but there's, there's always there's a, choice a choice in that right. Right. and so i mean we've talked about this in a lot of our previous videos sure. but this yeah. idea of owning where your power actually is instead mm -hmm. of focusing on where it isn't is right. actually what helps move people through a lot of the conflicts that they see yeah oh that's great yeah what a what a paradigm shift there. Mm -hmm. so you can shift it your can thinking be, on that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So ultimately, we recommend that students um, just align with their par their par the power that the parents mm -hmm. have and mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, just approach a conversation like they would a roommate agreement yeah. or any kind of, you know, conflict. Um, but even before there's conflict, just say, oh, you know, like this is this is who I am now, this is how I've changed, this is what I would like to do, this is what I think living at home looks like for me. Mm -hmm. How does that work for you? Right. What do you envision? Like, yeah. what are you wanting from me? Yeah. Because I know you're in charge, I know this is your house, I right. know that I'm coming into your space, right. and you've gotten to live without me for nine months. So well, how's I'm, that then, Mom and Dad? Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it might be hard for you, you know, to have me come back. Yeah. And so let's talk about, yeah, what's different as oh, wow. I move back home. And then let's talk about how to, yeah, make this work for both of us. Mm -hmm. And if the students can, pre, you know, can move toward their parents from that place, like Adam said, of mutuality, right. rather than sort of that one down, it doesn't mean that the conversation is going to go well because a lot of depends <laughs> on the parents, right, you know. Right. Um, but it does mean that the students operating from that pla that place of greater adulthood, which is, you know, what we uh, again try to encourage them to grow into, and they have a better mm -hmm. chance of ha having that work out for them. Right. Yeah. And, and it's and it's interesting too because in res life, like that's all spelled out in a contract. A lot of like the rules right. and the norms mm -hmm. and the regulations, but when you go home, people often don't think about yeah. that. And so, whereas you all do a really good job of just just laying it all out, like these are mm -hmm. expectations for you. We don't think to have those conversations, but it, it, it's really great right from the start to have it mm -hmm. and to make sort of the unknown known right yeah. in that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, encouraging people to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, what a game changer if if you're able to do that on the onset. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. that. Really is a nugget, and I, I, I mean, you you delivered. I, I, I think about it, and it is, 
is when I came home at, at 18, uh, for that first time, if I would have taken that into space, I would have had a much different experience, and I know it. I know my parents would have responded to that, uh, uh, but I, I think I acted more as an adolescent when I made that decision, or I made that transition, right. and uh, rebelled against my parents, and uh, right. take that. And it sounds like a number of our students are, are that's their knee-jerk reaction to mm -hmm. that, and, and in that space as well. So um, I really hope you all uh, find a way to apply that out there. Now, next question, which leads me to, we mm -hmm. do have parents that follow us on social media, maybe watching this too. Mm -hmm. If they're welcoming their, their adult child home yeah. what advice do you have for them yeah i would just say fire yourself as their parents yeah <laughs> like yeah. fire yourself seriously because so freeing. it is because like adam said too if we're wanting to raise kids to become adults then at some point we need to stop parenting them because mm -hmm. parenting somebody always puts us in that parenting position right. and them in a child position and so then you're going to elicit that um, adolescent kind of pushback mm -hmm. response. But if you fire yourself as a parent and you start seeing them, seeing your adult child as somebody, as an adult mm -hmm. who can negotiate, who has, you know, knows some of what they want and can, I don't know, yeah, create kind of a, a different mm -hmm. contractual relationship right. that way. <clears throat> Yeah. So if I'm a parent and mm -hmm. I fire myself as a parent, mm -hmm. do I get a new job or what's my new role? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like maybe mentor or coach or like you're just, you're there to continue to, you know, hold on yourself, mm -hmm. have your boundaries. Right. As a parent, don't let go of your own boundaries. Right. Don't compromise your own values. Kind you know, of like a process. business partnership that you might have. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're, you're, you want to be for your students, you want to be like, you know, just cheering them on, you want to be right. supporting them, you want to be asking, you know, how can I help resource right. you? Yeah. But it's really the student's job to say, this is who I am, this is what I'm needing, this is mm -hmm. what I'm wanting, and, and for you to negotiate those things. So, right. so not stepping in and caretaking or um, being that provider of resources anymore. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we give this advice often to students. There's also a piece in there I think that's really important to help move to that place, which is grieving. And so when I talk to students about mm -hmm. that, because oftentimes, like, yeah. the students I work with, they're, like, pulling for their parents to still parent them in a lot yeah. of ways. And, and they're not getting what it is that they want. And so right. I, I, like, we talk about this in some of our yeah. other videos, but this idea of, like, when you mourn, like, like what you wish was there and isn't, and you right. can kind of yeah. let go of it, then what's left you yeah. can work with reality right. and and you can have a really good relationship with this if you can let go of this yeah. yeah right and so that idea and so similarly for parents it's like i really want you to be a straight a student and i want you to do this and i want you to do that you grieve that and right. you let it go mm -hmm. and then you work with what's left and and i don't know what you name this exactly right. but your new job uh -huh. and it's like this can be so much more fulfilling once right. you can really let go of this desire to to parent and to mm -hmm. you know project your stuff onto your kids and right. take yeah. responsibility for them because then it becomes really about you know you get to see who your kid really is right. you know at their core yeah and start to experience them and enjoy them for who they are instead of all those parental <laughs> you know projections right. that we put on our kids like we want them to be something you know it's, right. it's hard it's hard as a parent we invest so much right. and we invest a lot of times we sure. hold on too tightly and so so yeah. letting go is huge, mm -hmm. and there are losses. I'm so glad you brought that up, Adam, because there are losses involved. Sure. And when you you tackle those losses and you just grieve over them, you know, cry hard, get mad, you know, yeah. and then and then you can start to experience, you know, each other mm -hmm. for who you really are, rather than who you kind of yeah. want to be for each other or feel like you right. want the other person to be, be for, for you. you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I, it seems to me that if a parent does that well, it's going to be really, really helpful in helping mm -hmm. their student move forward in their development because Absolutely. the process is dependence, mm -hmm. independence, and then to interdependence. Mm -hmm. And that interdependence can't be right. realized unless there is a mutually beneficial relationship where they're somewhat on an equal playing field. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, yeah that, that makes a lot of sense in terms of helping that the de adult development uh, mm -hmm. process you, you got to you got to foster that and you got to do that this is that's the way to do it so i really appreciate that 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 wisdom and again mm -hmm. 
that those nuggets that you're providing for our students and their families and yeah yeah thank you that yeah. that makes a lot mm -hmm. well, yeah and we appreciate you you know Yay. taking the time I out know. coming on our show <laughs> Uh, yeah, giving us some good stuff to work mm -hmm. with, and so yeah, you know, you are welcome back anytime. Woohoo! Yes, yeah. uh, thank you, really. Yeah, I yeah. hope I help your ratings. I mean, <laughs> yes, hopefully. I know. <laughs> Either that, or I might have to come back as like an antagonist to be like a, a you know, kind of find a way to get those ratings up. Like, yeah, you know, some controversy to yeah, the show. Yeah, some controversy. <laughs> I mean, if I need to bring a tiger in here, or what we need to do, but right. we'll figure it out. Yes. Oh, that's exactly. great. My commitment level's there. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Jeremy, and thanks again for all that you do in Rose Life, because um, I know I know your heart, I know mm. your skill set, I know what your values are and how you try to build community, mm. and the way that you attempt to do that with your staff is yeah. so in alignment with what we know that students need in order to become those adults. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so, um, yeah, we appreciate our partnership, and yeah. then just really appreciate, yeah, what you do for our students yeah. in this Residence Life program. Yeah, thank you so much uh -huh. for your kind words. That means a lot. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And so once again, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. And uh -huh. uh, I believe we'll be posting more videos in the future. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, if you have any questions about or questions for us at the show or questions about coronavirus and EOU's response to it, you can go to mm -hmm. eou.edu slash coronavirus and click on the questions and comments button. Yes. And meanwhile, we encourage you to continue to practice vulnerability, compassion, and self-care. All right, thanks. Thanks.